Arizona, the desert, a harsh landscape for life, and in the NFL. In 60 years, the Cardinal franchise had won one playoff game. Yet here he was, Kurt Warner, NFL's most unlikely success story, trying to resurrect his career one last time. Warner was asked to do what he did in New York. Help prepare the team's franchise quarterback. Think more about Orlando and Houston, so you got the six over the ball. Okay. Because they're going to check back to cover two every time. He also took under his wing the best young Cardinal. I made my first Pro Bowl, and I was feeling good about myself. And we were at dinner one time at his house, and uh, I told him, I said, Kurt, man, I'm I'm pretty good. I'm, I'm, I think I, I think I pretty much got it. So I asked him, you know, Larry, don't you want to be the best? And he said, Why? I, I'm good enough. Kind of was that lightning moment where I thought, okay, this is why I came to Arizona. I came here to establish something that's bigger than good enough. I wanted to help these guys understand what it looked like in practice, what it looked like in the meeting room, what it looked like to be the best. Depending on your personality, he knows how to tweak you. So if you're a guy that can't deal with being criticized, then he's not going to do it. He's going to pat you on the butt. Don't need much. It's all on you. This is what you do. This is what you do. Um, if you're a guy that needs to get jumped on, he'll do that. He would always jump on me, no matter what. We're playing against Seattle Seahawks. I was close to 100 yards. I wanted to get to 100 yards. I was like, Kurt, let me get about six more yards to get to this 100. He looked at me and said, are you trying to win this game, or is this all about you? <laughs> like, you do something wrong, I always try to get away from him. You know, I thought maybe he'll just cool down. You never want to get that stare, though. I even see it given to his kids, though. Like a little Elijah, not too long ago, I saw him and gave him that stare. He, he had a little puppy dog face. Kurt has a way of uh, getting your attention when he needs to. I think there's a lot of things that, that make Kurt Warner special, but probably one of the things that you have the greatest respect for. You know, Kurt was always a guy that did a great job of getting the ball out on time and making the accurate throws. But there was a lot of times, especially on deeper throws, where he had to stand in there and let go of the ball at the last second and take a beating. The Cardinals were no longer thinking good enough. You know what? This is all honesty, man. No, no, but this is all honesty. I told myself, I said, I'm getting time. I got to play my tail off because if he would have had it, he would play his tail off. So I want you to know that, man. I, I, thought, that, I thought that in the middle of the game, I thought, you know what? I have to step up and play because I'm getting time to throw and he would, he would play good if he had this. You know, what I uh, recognized or saw pretty quick was this was a guy that wasn't of the mindset of what I really was when I walked in there that Kurt Warner's done. He had kind of been to the top of the mountain and was on his way back down. He definitely believed uh, he had a little more left. Warner began the 2007 season on the bench. In the fifth game, Matt Leinert broke his collarbone. The 36-year-old quarterback got his chance to show what kind of drive he still had. The very next game, get Kurt's first start, he dislocated his elbow. That would have ended the season for a lot of people, and there was no way. He, was, he, was, he fought back as quick as you could fight back. On some of his handoffs, he would cross over with his right hand and turn it over backwards. You knew at that point, this guy wants to play. In the last eight games, Warner averaged nearly 300 yards passing and threw 21 touchdowns. Kurt is on. Kurt? Yeah. Hey. I mean, it's like watching Madden. <laughs> I mean, it's unbelievable. Huh? What's up? If he's on, he's on. But if he's off, if you don't pressure oh, him. Oh, Lord, we don't pressure him, he's on, period. During the end of the 2007 season, I don't know that there was a better quarterback in the league than the way Kurt played for us. That was really when everybody, you know, kind of looked and said, this guy is still Kurt Warner. Tough, competitive, the greatest I've ever been around. In 2007, Warner surprised the Cardinals coaching staff. In 2008, he would attempt to shock the world. Go. Warner set out to do the inconceivable. At age 37, he hoped to lead a franchise that hadn't won in 60 years to a championship. Talk to him. First, 
he had to beat out a now healthy Matt Leinart for the starting job. Everybody in this league, in this business, wants to go with the young guy, especially the one that shows promise and the one that's the high draft pick. Kurt was having trouble holding on to the football. He was uh, taking a lot of sacks. You know, there was a lot of criticism about that. Once he had shown at the end of the 2007 season what he could do and then continued to work on some of the things that we felt prepared him to play well, it wasn't a hard decision. You know, it really just came down to who we felt gave us the best chance to win at that time, and that was Kurt. The Cardinals began flying high, winning seven of their first 10 games. Oh, what a throw by Graybeard, Kurt Warner. But then, <laughs> crashed back to earth. <laughs> they lost four out of their next five. The team from the desert was playoff bound, but as cold as the New England snow. You know, after taking a bad beating, I got a letter from Brenda, and it was a letter written from Zach's perspective. Remember me when you want to give up. Remember I didn't. Remember me when you think life is hard. Remember my life is. Remember me when you want to hurry through life. Remember me, slow down. Love, Zach. It was one of those defining moments where, um, you know, it was easy to kind of look at the negative things, but she was showing me how this young man in front of us, he's got struggles and trials everywhere around him, yet he continues to believe that he's gonna overcome it. The timing was perfect to apply to where we were and where I wanted to go that season. We practiced in the rain two straight days. I mean, it was coming down like cats and dogs. I think guys really understood um, the importance of putting together a good week of work. And it was all started by Kurt. I mean, those two rain practice, I don't think a ball touched the ground. And from that day on, we were a different ball club, and it all started with him. In the playoffs, the Cardinals turned their play around. It's a flea flicker. Warner going to throw deep. Near side goal for Fitz. He's in double coverage. It doesn't matter. He caught it anyway. And touchdown, Cardinals. Warner and Fitzgerald teamed up for one stunning performance after another. Caught at the five. Heading for the pylon. Understand what we got at stake now. Ah! It's like nothing you've ever felt before. Let's get back to business. Let's shock the world. As time looks left, rolls over the middle of the fifth. Caught inside the five, breaks a tackle, and Fitz is in. Touchdown, Cardinals! He's going to throw it back to Kurt, far side of the 25. Now Warner going deep, airing it out. Middle of the field, Vince is there, he caught it at the 10, touchdown! <laughs> Warner takes, back to throw, fade, left side, Fitzgerald. He got it, touchdown, his third of the day! The NFL's most unlikely success story had done it again. He had taken the Cardinals to a place they had never been. When nobody else believed in us, when nobody else believed in me, you guys did, and we're going to the Super Bowl! At the start of Super Bowl 43, Warner was awarded the NFL Man of the Year in recognition for his football excellence and outstanding community service. Near the end of the game, the feel-good story of the year appeared headed toward its finest hour. Gonna throw a fade right side, Fitzgerald, he got it! Touchdown! Warner to pass, with time, fires up the middle of the fence, caught at the 45, 50, Fitz is lost 40, 30, goodbye! Then the Cardinals lead Super Bowl 43. But just like in Super Bowl 36, he was denied a storybook ending. Man, oh man, that close. We lost again at the last second uh, on an amazing play that 
uh, you would think would be similar to the Patriots game where it would just demoralize you, a game that you thought about often. But my perspective had changed, uh, not only in that season, but as a person and throughout my career. And I remember running down our sideline because I knew where my family was sitting. And they were crying and they were disappointed. And I just remember looking at them and saying, it's okay. You know, it, it's, it's no big deal. Life isn't about winning a, a football game. It's about the moments and it's about being able to relish and enjoy the things that God gives you.